His case began back in the 90s and still goes on. In 2007, the district court ruled against him. They said that the EPA order, he's in defiance of the EPA court order that says he needs to make the land like it was. He's like, where am I going to get 7,000 tires? <laughs> you, you think my neighbors are going to be happy with me for throwing tires in the stream? I'll bet you he can be arrested for throwing tires in a stream. What do you think? It's insane. He should get a medal, and he should be given back his money and his property. There's a guy named John Rapulanos who lives in Bay County, Michigan. Same thing happened to him, three years in prison for moving dirt on his land. In northern Kentucky, I have a supporter who's a German immigrant, came here with nothing and has been very successful. So he has a farm with some cattle, and he was out there one day on his bulldozer moving some dirt around the cattle pond. EPA comes out to him and says, stop and make it like it used to be. He's like, all I'm doing is trying to prevent the erosion of my pond. I'm just moving the dirt around because the dirt goes in the pond, and then the pond goes from being three feet deep to being one inch deep. He's just trying to fix a problem on his land. They came back, and they had lawyers, and they said, we're going to fine you $25,000 a day until you make your pond back, your cattle pond back like it used to be. And so uh, he reached in his pocket, and he pulled out the original bill, and he said, it says here, and he speaks a little bit with a Germanic accent, he says here that farms are exempt. And they say, well, you know, and he says, and you can get the hell off of my land. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Gibson Guitar was raided. You know who raided them? One of the 32 federal agencies that are armed, Fish and Wildlife. Now, why is Fish and Wildlife raiding a guitar factory? And why are they going into a factory where you have skilled artisans that are fashioning wood and making guitars and I'm guessing are not armed? Why do you go in with a SWAT team with semi-automatic weapons? Dozens of agents, according to the CEO, descended on Gibson Guitar with semi-automatic weapons to shut them down for the crime of bringing wood into the country from, some of it comes from India, some of it comes from Madagascar. And you know what they're accused of breaking? Not a U.S. law, an Indian law. There's something called the Lacey Act, which we're going to try to repeal. The Lacey Act says that you can be arrested and given criminal charges in our country if you break the law of another country. Is, is that not the craziest thing? You, I would have not believed that it existed until we found out about this. But just the insaneness of coming in and raiding a guitar company and to add insult to injury, you know what they told him? He's also, by the way, a Republican donor, which you wonder whether they haven't raided the other main guitar factory, which is a Democrat donor. Does it make a difference? They told him in legal briefings that he could make everything right if he would have the guitars made in Madagascar because he's importing unfinished wood and finishing it here, it's a crime. If he would get Madagascar ends to finish the wood, he would not be in breach of the law and everything would be fine, this would go away. This is insane. We're gonna to try to have a hearing in the next month, and I'm not really officially in charge of the committee, so we're gonna to have to have our own committee hearing, but I'm gonna have my own hearing, and I'm gonna to try to bring in some of these people who've been arrested and have their stories broadcast, have them give testimony. When I was running for office and when I was elected, I thought the biggest problem our country can, faces is the debt, and I still think that. In some ways, I think it's probably worse than I thought before I got there. We are now borrowing $40,000 a second. It is literally out of control. So I stood up yesterday on the floor and I said, if you're borrowing $40,000 a second, if your bridges are crumbling and falling into the river, they shut down. We have three bridges in Louisville. Louisville's got over a million people. It's the biggest city in my state. They shut down one of the bridges. The pictures on the internet are of cars stacked up. Can you imagine when a third of the traffic now is stacked up and can't get across the bridges? They shut down a bridge, and yet we're giving $30 billion in foreign aid to other countries. It is insane, and I ask them to take the money. If you need money for FEMA, take it from foreign aid. Um, 
Once again, that applause is more than I got on the Senate floor. Uh, we got, I think, 20 votes on that. We had another amendment by Senator Coburn that says we have $7 billion worth of duplicate programs. Let's eliminate the duplicate programs and take it from there to pay for FEMA money. He got 54 votes, but they set the hurdle at 60, so we still didn't win. He had another thing on the floor which just amazes me. 10% of the transportation budget is set aside for enhancements, beautification, bike pass, things like that. I ride my bike. I like having bike pass. If we had a lot of surplus and savings, we could build bike pass. But we have bridges that are closed down. Northern Kentucky's got another one. They've been trying to replace a bridge in Northern Kentucky for 15 years. We can't do it because we don't have the money. And uh, But he found out that 10% of the budget was being set aside for projects, and he listed a few of them. One of them's a turtle tunnel. Now, my first question to my staff was, how do you get the turtles to understand they're supposed to go through the tunnel? Do, they, do you have signs next to the tunnel saying turtles go through the tunnel and not go over the road? They had another one that was a couple hundred thousand for a uh, white squirrel sanctuary. Once again, how do you get the squirrels to know that they're supposed to go to the sanctuary? But hundreds of thousands of dollars, 10% of the budget, the budget's about $40 billion, so $4 billion being directed not towards bridges and not towards roads. In my town, we have a Corvette museum. Everybody loves a Corvette, and I, I do too, and I want you to come to our Corvette museum. But should you have had to pay taxes in Reno or in California, wherever you came from, should you have to pay taxes for a $200,000 movie theater in the Corvette museum when our bridges are falling down? It's insane. So I stood up and I said, as legislators, one of the things you should have to do is make priorities. You should have to decide where the money's to be spent. What is more important? your bridges or foreign welfare. Most of them decided foreign welfare was. They told me that if, we, if they didn't get their money, a million people would die from AIDS. And it's like, oh, so now it's my fault that a million people are gonna die from AIDS? It's just ridiculous. They also said that I was gonna destroy our national defense if I took money out of foreign aid. It's foreign welfare, it's not national defense. They say 70% of foreign aid is stolen off the top that goes to Africa. So even if you thought it was a good idea for taxpayer money to go to help diseases in Africa, it's being stolen. Mobutu, Mugabe, all of these leaders, they, they have fabulous personal wealth and residences, and yet their people never get the money. Zimbabwe, they, most of the country doesn't have running water or electricity. They have fabulous wealth in gems and gold and silver, and the wealth is just stolen. Then we send money and it's stolen again. You know, during the, when we did the bank bailout, we didn't fully get the audit we wanted from the Fed, but one of the things we did discover from the partial audit, 87 foreign banks got TARP money that went through AIG and went to foreign banks. You know what one of the foreign banks was? The Central Bank of, of uh, Libya. So we fight them on one hand, while on the other hand we give them money. Many of the neocons who want to have troops on the ground in Libya and had fought from the very beginning saying that the president wasn't doing enough, that we needed an all-out war, those same people wanted to arm Gaddafi two years ago. WikiLeaks had something come out recently and said several of the individuals who seem to be in favor of most of these wars wanted to arm Gaddafi only two years ago. So he's a horrible thug this year, but two years ago they wanted to arm him and bring him to our side by giving him more of your money. It, it is literally out of control. What I can tell you right now is there's not enough votes up there to do most of the things we want to do. We are stopping some of what's going on, but there's not enough votes yet. So you are going to need reinforcements. What you can also do is if your congressman or senator you don't think is with us, but might be with us on some issues, I really think a lot of them are influenceable. Write them, email them, bug them to death, go to their town halls in a nice way if you know but try, try to influence them some of them are influenceable and while I'm somewhat pessimistic on the short term whether or not we're going to change things in the long term I think that there's an amazing resilience to capitalism to freedom to our founding documents that allows us to get through most of what government tries to do to us 
But I think also there's going to come a time where those of us who remain in Washington and who are there when the crisis comes hopefully can help to sort the mess out. I'm afraid that there's going to need to be more of a crisis before they wake up because they haven't figured out how serious it is. But I think it is serious. It is coming. And what I appreciate is uh, this movement that my dad has gotten started and hope that you will continue to fight the good fight. And I appreciate being able to speak to you today. Thank you.